Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Springview Hospital. My name is Tim Trottier, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer here. For those who haven't met, we could not be more excited to be hosting this event today. And to start, we're going to do some introductions, beginning with our very own Governor, Matt Bevin. So, Governor, thank you for being here today. We were just talking about how unusual it is to have the governor and the lieutenant governor in the same place. So we're, we're honored to have these two important people with us today. Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton. A person who needs no introduction in Marion County, Kentucky, our very own Senator Jimmy Higdon. I'm going to turn it over to Senator Higdon and uh, have him say a few words. I noticed he said a few words, Governor. <laughs> but what an honor it is to stand here in my hometown and welcome to Lebanon and Marion County today, Governor Bevan and Lieutenant Governor Hampton. It's, it really is a privilege to stand here and do that today. Thank you all for being here. Um, I do want to point out Robert Augustine in the back of the room with Senator Paul's office who... Uh, does a great job of constituent service work. Um, you know, it, I, I do, I was going to say that I've served under four governors and, um, and been a state representative for seven years and now in my seventh year as a state senator. And I know when the governor, lieutenant governor, come to town, you didn't come to hear me, so I will be very brief. <laughs> but I wanted to make a couple points. Number one, I wanted to recognize the hospital staff for what a great job and what a great work ethic that they have. and, and you know, this hospital wouldn't be a hospital without a great staff. And thank you all for what you do. <laughs> Number two, just a brief word about Senate Bill 20. And, and uh, Senator Ralph Alvarado, who is a doctor, um, worked on Senate Bill 20. It was, a, it was a wrestling match the whole session. But we, we, we got it done. And the reason for Senate Bill 20, back when the Affordable Care Act, uh, AKA Obamacare, came in, uh, and we set up these MCOs, managed care organizations. And, and their original design was to make money. We gave them a, a capitated amount of money every month, and they were gonna make money by getting people well. Regular checkups, uh, work with their diabetes, and just get people, unhealthy people, healthy. And they were going to make money by doing that. Well, some way, somehow along the way, they figured out they could make money by shortchanging the providers. And I'm sure Dr. Salem and, and the hospital administrators in this room would agree that I'm saying the right thing because uh, Dr. Thomas, you, you know what I'm talking about. They, they just didn't, it wasn't a level playing field. And if a, a provider had an issue with an MCO, there was no appeal process. So that's what Senate Bill 20 does. It allows a, a, an appeal process and levels the playing field for the great providers in the state of Kentucky to be able, if they have an issue with an MCO, that they have a place to go and, and resolve that issue. So that's, that's Senate Bill 20. I, it's my honor to, to get to introduce the governor of Kentucky that uh, will say a few words. I shouldn't, he'll say in, in all the words he wants to say. He's <laughs> governor. Don't be offering up that kind of We want to show you what a great place Marion County is. But uh, anyway, uh, Governor Bevan had um, grew up in a rural setting, uh, very humble beginnings, and um, learned from an early age the value of a strong work ethic and strong Christian values. He went off to college and, and um, went through ROTC and ended up in, served eight years in the military um, and became an entrepreneur on numerous uh, companies. He moved to Kentucky with his wife, Glenna, 17 years ago. Uh, they now have nine children. Uh, we passionately call them uh, in Frankfurt the Bevan 11. <laughs> and uh, they've certainly filled up the, the governor's mansion. But, um, you know, he's, he uh, was elected in November, uh, inaugurated, had went to the inauguration in December, and hit the ground running and surrounded himself with a lot of great people. 
uh, immediately start working on the budget to try to get Kentucky's financial house in order. And he's, he's made great strides, and you see that in, in this first budget that we passed. And without his help, we would have never been able to do what we did, uh, uh, appropriate the money to our retirement system and start down the path of getting it on solid ground, as we did under his guidance. Uh, we have workforce issues in Kentucky, and he shepherded through a $100 million uh, workforce investment and, and uh, uh, bill to, to work on um, new state-of-the-art um, um, ways of training employees and, and work on advanced manufacturing. So he's done a great job, and like I said, it seems like he's did a lifetime already, Governor. It's only been six months, so expect great things from our governor of Kentucky. And that's, it's with great pleasure today that I introduce to, and welcome to Marion County and Lebanon, Governor Matt Bevin. Thank you. It is good to be here. See, what's wonderful, too, is when I'm standing here, it looks like I came dressed for the occasion. I, I went and put a tie on. I got the blazer. It's all good. Uh, but it's interesting, we have a day today where we're running around doing a number of things. I was actually over at the radio station, 100.9, the country station, right before uh, coming in here. Uh, I had a chance to be on air with them, and we were talking about this community. I truly love Lebanon. I love this community. I love the work ethic. I like the, the community feel of it. It's a small town feel where people truly, genuinely care about one another. Uh, Chief, I was just telling him, I uh, met one of his officers on the street who, I kid you not, as I came out of the radio station, he had his both hands were full. He had a short little wand thing in one hand and he had a long pole in the other. And I asked him what he was doing. And I kid you not, this is the kind of town this is where there's no wasted effort or inefficiency. He's marking tires and unfurling flags at the same time. <laughs> so he, seriously, he, had a, he was marking tires and he was, had this long pole to unfurl flags. So I literally, I had to take a selfie with him, and, uh, <laughs> which I did. And, uh, and I put one of them was at an angle where yeah, it's not the greatest picture because I truthfully, I couldn't even see it because the sun was so bright, but I just trusted that we were both in there. Got half my head in there, it was good enough, but all of his head, which was important. But you see this long pole uh, in the flag up behind us. And I just thought it really sort of captured the greatness of this community and really the greatness of, of Kentucky and of America. Uh, this is really why we do these things. In Senate Bill 20, which we will ceremoniously sign in a moment, this is an incredible opportunity to, as was said, level the playing field. I mean, this was not, and MCOs, this isn't meant to pick on any particular you know, constituency, but truth be told, MCOs had been making in Kentucky the average uh, profit for an MCO in America uh, last year was 2.6%. And you think, well, that's not a huge margin, but this is off a pretty phenomenal uh, amount of dollars. And truth be told, the profits were decent. The average was 2.6%. The average in Kentucky was 111 .1. So a little bit out of line. And so this will go a long way toward helping to balance that out a bit. And so this, has, this will not be quite as fertile a place uh, for MCOs as has been the case. They serve a purpose and this isn't to begrudge that purpose, but the point is we want to make sure that people are paid in a timely manner, that they're paid uh, fairly for the services that they provide. Uh, and having this type of an appeals process really is the purpose of this piece of legislation. So I'm delighted to be here. I truly am honored to be able to travel uh, with our Lieutenant Governor Janine. We are dear friends. We rarely have occasion, it seems, to see one another anymore. We did catch up for dinner the other night for about three hours, which was great. Uh, and it felt like it had been a long time. But I'm glad that we're both able to be here. I'll say just one thing. Uh, a, couple, a couple things real quick. The uh, one was, it, they made mention of uh, Secretary Landrum, Bill Landrum. I want to just mention something. So I met Bill Landrum uh, when uh, I was in Greene County at a little fundraiser. And uh, we got to talking, and what was it he did? Well, he'd recently retired, uh, and he was running a small catering business and starting a local uh, historical society because he had family from there and uh, thought it was important to remember the community and to try to pour back into it. And I thought, well, that sounds quaint and neat and fun. And I was a little jealous that I, he's at that stage in his life. And I thought that's kind of interesting. And then I said, so what was it you did before you were retired? And turns out he was the undersecretary for the US Army and ran global finance for the military. I thought, wow. 
Well, my goodness, with all due respect to the crepes you're making every Saturday, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that the Commonwealth could use a guy like you, and he now oversees all finance and administration for the Commonwealth of Kentucky and how fortunate we are. I'm delighted to see you here, uh, close to your uh, hometown, at least relative to uh, a normal day in the life. Uh, other members of my administration, uh, on the, my staff and Lieutenant Governor's staff, if you all could just raise your hands and I'll tell you why. You know, Brian, Isaac, uh, Taylor, uh, we got several, just raise them high there. The reason I asked you to, take a look at these folks. If there's things you have questions about and you don't have a chance to catch up, catch one of these individuals over here. Uh, introduce yourselves to them. Expect us, this is what I said this morning on the radio, expect us to be uh, available to you. I mean, you elected us to represent you. I've never been an elected official prior to this, uh, so I haven't learned how to be standoffish. Uh, I, expect, I, expect, I expect to have interaction. I expect you to ask me things and, and get answers back. You should have a response from us. You should get good governance. Uh, the reason we've gotten a lot done in six months is this is how I was raised. You know, I grew up in the country where you, you, know, you have a problem, you just fix it. Uh, and you get on about it, and if the sun is shining, you, you work twice as fast because it might be raining the next day. And so literally, it's literally the mindset for those of you who've ever gone haying. I mean, you move with a sense of purpose. When you cut hay and, and it's storm clouds are coming, you move with a sense of purpose. And this is essentially uh, how we operate now in state government. And the people that we have surrounded ourselves with, including our cabinet officials, uh, both Janine and myself, uh, our former military officers. I was delighted that your CEO, Tim, uh, he and I were uh, young officers at the same time 20-some-odd uh, years ago. Uh, and he was an armor guy. I was an artillery guy. Uh, I did not know him while we were in, but we share some commonality. It is that mindset, it is that work ethic, it is that responsiveness to you, the taxpayer, that I bring every day to this office. So I'm delighted to be here. I appreciate those of you who've come from a lot of different corners. And whether it's this specific issue or whether it's other issues that matter to you, let us know what those issues are, please. Tell us what you would have us know, what you need us to know. Talk to these members of our respective teams and tell if there's something you want us to look into, something to address, tell us what it is and we'll see what we can do uh, to get to it. With that said, I'll, I'll be happy to take questions when we're done, if time allows it, but in the meantime, let me in turn uh, introduce somebody to you who it truly is a dear friend of mine, has been for years, somebody who I have such incredible respect for. She's a woman who grew up uh, in a very uh, abject situation. Her mother had never even graduated from high school, um, maybe a 10th grade education, raised four little girls by herself, single mom, in her city. Uh, nobody in Janine's family had ever even gone to college, let alone graduated from college. Janine was not only the first to do both, but she didn't take the interdisciplinary studies route. Uh, she got a degree in industrial engineering, uh, then turned down opportunities to work for the big three automakers to then join the military. Served active duty in the Air Force for a number of years. Uh, served this nation, designed actually, has been acknowledged in recent years for a lot of the work she did during the first Gulf War pioneered a lot of the software that was used for the uh, AWACS planes that were providing cover uh, for that war effort. Incredible mind. Then got out, went on, got an MBA from a top business school, spent 20 years in manufacturing. Uh, somebody who brings such a wealth of life experience, intellectual experience, work experience to her job as our next and current Lieutenant Governor, Janine Hampton. to be here. I just want to, I won't be long. Uh, I'll just uh, piggyback on what the governor said. I'm not a politician either, so I, I haven't learned to be, you know, standoffish. Uh, in fact, what I was doing before he uh, totally ruined my plans was selling boxes. Uh, so I'm going to tell people that's a route to a rewarding uh, career in government, apparently. But, uh, but one of the things I learned, I was in sales and uh, traveling the basically the western half of Kentucky I learned that there's no substitute for face-to-face -face interaction with, um, with people. And that still holds true today in this position. Uh, there, you know, I, could, I could sit in my office and Google and, you know, and find out anything I need to know about a particular city or county, but there is simply no, face, no substitute for face-to-face -face interaction and asking you uh, what your concerns are, uh, talking to you, having you show me around. Uh, your city or your county, and that's what we've been doing for six months, 
And so I'm often asked, you know, do you love it? Yes, I do. The short answer is absolutely yes, I do. Uh, but, but ultimately, the governor, Governor Bevan and I want to make Kentucky better, and that's why we're in this. And so I will just echo what he said. Please contact us with your concerns. Uh, with, uh, and people are doing that. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're either sending us notes or they're, they're coming in to see us. Uh, and just sitting and talking with us and telling us what they're, what concerns them, um, sharing their ideas. And for me, that's really exciting. Uh, part of my undergrad degree is process improvement, and I'm still in process improvement mode. I just get to do it for the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and I couldn't be more excited to be in this position. So, so it's an honor to be here to share this day with you. Uh, thank you, Governor, for uh, actually, I'm, it is a rare day that we share the schedule, uh, the same schedule. So we're actually, we're going to be in Lebanon all day today, and I'm really excited to be here. And so just thank you for your time and attention. And thank you for what you do. I hope I never need your services. <laughs> but, but, but I'm glad you're there if I need you. So, so thank you. God bless you all. Thanks. We're now going to invite the governor to pick up a pen and uh, do the signing. And now we'll sign these things. <laughs> Terrific. We, we, uh, that would be good as well. It really would. So I'm going to hand these uh, to to you, and I'll let you. There are four of them, and I'll let you decide uh, who gets them. I think. Uh, you can always. Uh, Governor, while you're signing that next one, I want to recognize the local media here today. Gary White from Channel 6, Kevin Enterprise for being here. They do a great job uh, keeping our community in form. This is a good day. It's a good day for medicine. It's a good day for the Commonwealth. Uh, it's a good day for uh, level playing fields. It really is. So congratulations for all of you who are part of making this, uh, making this happen. Thank you very much.